family, everyone. Welcome back to my study. And I want to begin with a, a conversation about slavery. What are the rights and especially what are the responsibilities of a slave in the ancient world? Just a hit pause. How do we understand the concept of slavery? It's not one we, we might have come across, obviously, in, in our personal daily lives. But I guess we've all got a bit of a sense of what's what's involved. What, what do we think the rights and especially the responsibilities are of a slave? I guess our thinking probably goes immediately to modern slavery, hidden away, unregulated, um, no rights. Uh, and and severe punishments if you don't do what you're you're told. I guess that that accords most with our sense of um, the the transatlantic slave trade and other sorts of slavery that um, certainly ease much more on the responsibilities than the than the um, rights side, isn't it? What we're talking about, I think, in in Jesus' day is probably a little bit less that. Um, slaves were off, would often sell themselves into slavery because they couldn't make ends meet and they would get food and board um, in exchange for their work. But, but lots of things would be very similar. A slave does exactly what they're told, has no freedom except that which is given to, him, to them, uh, cannot run away, they run away, they, they'd be executed. So uh, lots of responsibility to, to do whatever they're told and no real rights. Now take a look at John 8, uh, 33. Um, they answered, we are Abraham's descendants, and we have never been slaves of anyone. Which, of course, for Israel was not strictly historically true, was it? They've been slaves in Egypt, they've been slaves to Babylon. But to some extent it was, it was true for them personally. So not their ancestors, but for them. They were under Roman rule, but with a certain degree of autonomy. And so they could say, we're not slaves, we have freedoms, we can do many things of our own choice. Of course, there were, there were limits, um, as of course there are for all of us. But um, how can you say that we should be set free? Now, here is the thing, here's the critical point. Jesus replied, very true, I tell you, everyone who, is a, uh, who sins is a slave to sin. Slave to sin. Uh, commanded by sin to do what what sin wants us to do with no rights uh, no freedoms we we might well think that we we act um freely clearly the israelites thought they acted freely but jesus point is that you you act sinfully you you freely choose to use your your social freedoms to do what sin demands you are bound by sin you're shackled and and bound to do what your sinful nature desires and of course uh, if you die in your sins you are condemned that's what jesus has just been saying in in sunday's passage so jesus is is here talking about not a, not a social uh, slavery but a spiritual slavery and one which we simply cannot get out of ourselves. It's bound up with this idea of the darkness and Jesus coming as the light into the darkness. People prefer the darkness because their deeds are evil. It's all bound up together. Anyone who sins is a slave to sin. And the conclusion is the, the slave has no permanent place in the family. So the family being God's people... Um, they appear to have a temporary they, they appear to be part of God's people, but it is a temporary residence. When it comes to the final judgment, those who are slaves to sin, who, who die in their sins, are outside the family. It's a very serious thing that Jesus is talking about. The son, I noticed it's a singular son, sorry, a son belongs to it forever. Verse 36. If the son, so so sons and daughters are naturally parts of the family. They're not bought and sold the way slaves are. They're not got rid of. And Jesus' point is, you're either a son 
or you're a slave. You're either in or you're out. If you're a slave to sin, if you die in your sin, then you're ultimately going to be cut out from God's people. It's a very serious thing, isn't it? Very serious thing. But if the Son, capital S, Jesus, the true Son of God, the only true inheritor of the family, if he sets you free, free from uh, the consequences of sin, free from the power of sin, and ultimately, in the end, free from the presence of sin, then you're truly free. It's freedom that starts when we put our trust in Jesus. It's a freedom that increasingly becomes ours as by his spirit he empowers us to put sin to death and on the day when jesus comes back when when this judgment is made when the the slaves are got rid of and only the sons and daughters come in he will cleanse us of even the impulse to sin so that no longer will we be captives in doing whatever sin desires we will be free from that to be true children true sons and daughters of our heavenly father It's a glorious promise, but it is only a promise that can come true in the Lord Jesus. Let's pray, shall we? Heavenly Father, please would you help each and every one of us to be true sons and daughters. Free us from the power of sin. Free us increasingly from the presence of sin. And thank you that through Jesus we are free from the uh, consequent judgment of our sin. It is not our master anymore. You, Heavenly Father, are our King and our God. Amen.